fun. All right, and we're live. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Um. Let's all right. Go. So this let's is uh, this is obviously chapter two of our little story here. Um, our returning uh player, um, Davis, aka playing Priscilla, and we also got a commentator, yeah. Cameron. Uh, would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Um, hello, I'm gonna be playing. Uh, can't wait to see what my little shadow cat gets up to. Hello, I'm gonna be watching. Can't wait to see what his little shadow cat gets up to. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I am the DM, go. and I cannot wait to see <laughs> what happens with the shadow cat. Um, even though I technically control it, and I can just kill it whenever I want to. But... Uh, you know, I would like if you didn't do that. Okay, yeah. No, 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 that would ruin all the fun. Um, so... Yeah, you gotta kill it slowly. You can't just kill it outright. <laughs> That's not you what I meant. Dysentery, not... No, no, just stab it. Cat dysentery. Uh, okay, so Davis and Cameron, uh, would you guys like to give a little recap of the last session? Uh, so basically, my character is a dragonborn with two human parents. Uh, my mom is an alcoholic, and my dad's never around. A lot like real life, honestly. Um, don't. Okay, that was a joke. My parents are actually not like that. Um, <laughs> uh blanking uh yeah and then i had a sister i cared for the sister for a bit and then my mom took her away and then i was at home all the all day all alone all depressed and stuff but then because your parents won't let you go into public because they're afraid of what people will think of you but it's mostly yeah. your mom but yeah and then and then one night a little kitty cat which my character doesn't actually know what a cat is uh shows up my window and i'm like oh <gasps> A wind and then I try to like feed the cat and make friends with it but I consistently suck at handling with animals mm -hmm. so oh, <laughs> I'm surprised this cat didn't just hate me and 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 antics ensue and it turns out that that humans and maybe gnomes we're not sure if you actually saw it just can't see the cat only me, my little sister, and like some falcons can see the cat. And the cat can teleport, so that's cool. And I'm trying to become a falconeer, which are people that like have tamed falcons that they can tell to do stuff. Yeah, I think that's a great recap. Uh, Cameron, do you have anything to add? No, I think we should just get right into the news. Okay. All right, so um, with that, I think we can begin our little story. All right, give me a second. All right, so as we begin, we need to do a little thing that I forgot to do last session. Uh, we're going to upgrade some of your stats. Ooh. So, um, uh, tell me, uh, your one, your pool, and two, your stats so far. Okay, so my pool is thirty six. My stats are, uh, nine, 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 eight, eight, eleven. Okay. So, um, uh, and also give me your age. How old are you at this point? You're like I what? Think Fourteen. But like I am physically around seventeen because Dragonborns age faster. Yes, yes, that that is correct. All right, so um, looking at uh, stats. Okay, so um, your strength does not get upgraded because you're not really doing any physical labor at all. Um, mm -hmm. Your dexterity, uh, since you mainly stay inside all the day, all time, all the time, uh, doesn't up get upgraded either. Uh, constitution, though, uh, since you're eating well and uh, sleeping every night, I'm going to upgrade that by two. Let's go. So, one plus one plus one plus one. That gets upgraded to an 11. All right. So, um, also, 
Um, next is your intelligence, right? Yes. All right. Since you spend most of your days alone, uh, just kind of finding time for yourself, uh, you're playing with your toys quite a bit, and your imagination grows. And as you do, um, you uh, get to have more time just in thought with yourself and meditation. And with that, I'll upgrade your intelligence by two. A smart little cookie. Wow, these ABC blocks are quite informative. <laughs> <laughs> I can make so many word combinations with these. Wisdom is next. All right. With wisdom, a little bit of a different story. Um, since you've been um, not outside very much and uh, have been stuck inside, um, you don't really get to explore out very many areas. Um, so I'm not going to upgrade that at all. Um, charisma, though, uh, since you do spend a lot of your efforts trying to um, talk to the children uh, when you are outside, and um, since you're trying to uh, ps 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 the cat, um, I'm going to uh, upgrade your charisma by one. All right. We got our first plus one stat. Nice. All right. So, um... Also, uh, oh, how many skill upgrades have we given you? Uh, well, I need to do, I need to subtract from the pool now, but, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 upgrades, which okay. 45 minus 14 is 31? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we're at 31 right now. Okay, cool. In terms of pool. And uh, how many skill upgrades have we given you? Um, didn't I just count it be 14? No, no, no. That is your ability score upgrades. Skill upgrades are like animal handling, uh, athletics. Uh, zero. I have not gotten a single skill upgrade at all. Okay. I think now is the time. So I'm going to give you a choice here. Uh, you have been pretty much equally giving as much effort into um, trying to be around children and... Uh, being friends with them as you have been trying to be friends with the cat so i'm gonna give you a option here either um uh actually let me let me check something real quick to make sure i can get this right Uh, yeah, I'm going to allow you to get uh, a um, proficiency in either persuasion or animal handling. Well, I feel like if I do train to be a falconer, I think that would like just give me the choice of animal handling again eventually if I train well enough in that. Well, if that's what you think. Well, when you say it like that... Um... Hmm. Cameron, like... Do you think that I should go with animal or persuasion? Uh, well, judging by the past, you've done fine with any role that's not animal handling. So <laughs> you could use a boost in that. And also, didn't you say charisma is your highest stat right now anyway? Yeah, it's the only one that's not negative and it's at plus one. And animal handling is a wisdom thing, so... Which is that... minus one, so... Yeah. So that's basically, if you leave it, if you give animal handling, it would be like you had plus one for animal handling throws. And then if you just leave charisma where it's at, you still get plus one for per, uh, persuasion throws. All right. That is very insightful. We're going to go with animal handling for my proficiency. All right. So mark a little bubble where it says animal handling then. Yes. And with that, um, we are now... Um, going to, uh, try to, um, go back to where we left off. Uh, so, uh, you eventually go home, eat dinner with your family. Uh, the cat stays nearby at all times and kind of just explores the house. Um, 
Although this time you make sure he doesn't get up on any counters um, to knock anything off. Uh, so uh, eventually you go back to sleep and um, uh, every night you feed the cat and every morning you feed the cat. So I'm just going to allow that if that's what you want to do. Um, yes, consistently feed it. Okay. So uh, the next morning you wake up and your father uh, takes you over to the Falconeers once more. And he tells you, well, uh, Priscilla, I'm very glad for you. Uh, not many people get uh, accepted into the Falconeers, but... Um, just try your hardest, and uh, we'll see what happens. But just make sure you know that there are other options if this doesn't work out. Uh, yes, sir. I know that, but don't worry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you proud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do so well in this job. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> well, let's hope so. And uh, you guys head over to the Falconeers uh, outside the city. Um, you eventually get there, and there seems to be uh, again. Uh, young men and women uh, just kind of standing around talking with their falcons. And eventually, you see um, Hudok, uh, the known falconeer. Um, he, they were a gnome, right? Not human? Yes, they were a gnome. Yes, that that's what I thought. The teacher, like the person that like leads them or something like that. Yeah. So he eventually hops down and uh, gets out of his tent and approaches you. And uh, your father waves goodbye. Goodbye, Poppy. I wave back to him. All right, and he uh, sets off. So, uh, Hudok approaches you and says, Well, I see you've uh, come early today. That's a good sign. Well, you know, my father always said, if you're early, you're on time. <laughs> I see you've been raised well. With uh, handling animals, uh, you usually want to start pretty early, especially when the sun is rising. And he points over to the, the plane where the sun is rising. Uh, for uh, the day and uh, he looks mm -hmm. over at the different falconeers and says all right children time to meet your new uh, trainee and uh, a couple of them come over uh, there seems to be five in total um, two of them are girls and three of them are guys and they all seem to be about your age maybe a little bit older though um, when I say your age I mean like the 17 like year age the 17 yeah, yeah. Okay. um so uh when Hudok uh approaches them um they all look to have falcons. Um, the two girls have a... Um, uh, give me a second. The two girls have uh, seemingly um, uh, the the brownish uh, falcons that have like yellow beaks and uh, stare off into the sky kind of just scanning the area and uh another two of the guys have um what seems to be uh like tan looking falcons with uh brown tips and a uh, white head and of course a yellow beak and then one of the guys has um one that looks a little different um it seems to have um sort of grayish fur with uh white um a lot um uh, along his belly and um it almost looks like he has um, brown going up his head. And that one stares uh, directly at your cat. Um, which uh, the cat just uh, meows in response. And um, Hudok uh, introduces all of you. And um, let me pull them up real quick. Am I about to write five names down? Yes, I would recommend it. And they all seem to be okay. human, so. Tell me which one is chicks and guys as well. Okay. So, Sarah is uh, one of the girls. Uh, she seems to have uh, uh, short blonde hair. Um, uh, Stella is the other girl. She seems to have uh, sort of longer brown hair. There is... Yeah, I, I said I had to tell me which one's girls, but I think it's kind of obvious based on the names. Yeah. All right, so... Anyway, sorry to interrupt you. There's Guile, um, which is uh, one of the two guys with the um, sort of uh, tannish falcons. You then there's spell that G U A Y A L. Yeah, that's how you spell it. <laughs> Very creative. Got and then there's Christian, which is ne standing next to him with another tan falcon. And finally, uh, there's Nicholas, who is um, having the other sort of uh, weird looking falcon. I just can't write ends, apparently. Okay. Nicholas. Okay. So. 
Uh, with that, uh, let us see here. Okay. So, eventually, um, um, uh, Hudok, um, looks over at you and says, Well, um, you, since you are just a trainee at this point, uh, we won't be able to pay you. Uh, this will be more like an internship. Is that all right with you? Yes, sir. That seems perfectly reasonable. All right. Well, it seems like you already have all the equipment to be a falconer, but, uh, you lack two things, and that is proper training and your own falcon. And um, he looks over at you and says, uh, one is going to take a lot of work uh, to achieve, and the second will come after the first. And uh, he looks over to uh, the, the, the kids and says, well, um, one of you will have to take her under your wing. And uh, a, couple, a couple of the girls uh, chuckle. And, uh, so do I. Okay. So um, eventually uh, he looks over at them and says, all right. Um, first person gets to choose, um, who wants to take, uh, her as a trainee? And they all kind of look at you, and, um, a couple of, uh, the, both of the girls raise their hand, and, uh, one of the guys does, too, um, seems to be Christian. Um, uh, so she, he looks over at you and says, well, uh, who is it? Mm -hmm. So both the chicks and the one dude. Yeah. Guile uh, and, uh, Nicholas do not. And Nicholas was the one with that really weird-looking falcon, right? Yeah. So I don't get him. Um, hmm. I think we'll go with Sarah. All right. Um, so the sort of uh, short blonde hair-looking girl uh, comes over to you and um, uh, shows you her falcon, which uh, stares off into the sky. Uh, she says you're allowed to pet it if you'd like. Uh, yeah, I wanna wanna give it a wanna give it a little pet. Yes. Uh, she says he's been perfectly trained. Uh, I spend all my days uh, being with him, so he gets uh, used to being around humans. About that, <laughs> I don't actually say that though. Um. So eventually, Hander um, looks over at or Hudok looks over at all of um you and uh, says, "Well, let's get on with our day." And um. You can kind of see the general training of the Falcons. Um, basically, uh, all they do is um, teach the Falcons how to soar through the air effectively and how to um, uh, get orders from them. Uh, while they're still on their wrists, uh, they tell them and point uh, to certain areas of the sky. And after they come back successfully, um, they feed them. You realize that um, a lot of the Falcons are trained pretty well. But um, none compared to Nicholas's, um, which uh, goes almost, seeming at mock, sp mock speed through the air, um, and then yeah, comes back. The sound barrier, bro. And then comes back to um, Nicholas uh, without hesitation, and um, you realize that um, Guile is um, the one that has the most untrained Falcon. The Falcon seems to be distracted most of the time and doesn't come back when told to. Sarah and all the others, on the other hand, have sort of just normal ones. Um, they uh, they come back as normal, and um, eventually uh, they feed them. And uh, with that, um, Hudok says, "Well, now that you've seen what they can do, here, um, Sarah, put yours on um, on um, Priscilla." And uh, he uh, sort of forces your hand up in like an upright position. Do you wish to do anything? I have my, my like, falcon glove on so it doesn't scratch me, right? Yeah, you do. Uh, yeah, I'll just, like, leave my hand in there. All right. So, uh, you put your hand up, and eventually uh, Sarah says something into the falcon's ear and points to yours, and the falcon uh, hesitantly flies up and lands on your, sh uh, on your arm. Uh, make a strength saving throw. Oh, it's a heavy one. Got to go to Union Behind. First roll of the session. Oh, oh, uh, I got a six. 
All right. With that, um, the falcon uh, is surprisingly heavy, and your arm lowers. The falcon sort of freaks out for a moment and flaps into the air, uh, grabbing your arm and uh, forces it back up. And uh, instinctually, make a wisdom saving throw. All right. Okay, we got a nat twenty this time. So. Okay, you stay composed and uh, you know what to do. You straighten your arm as best you can, and eventually the falcon calms down and settles on your arm. Um, so, um, Hudok looks over at you and gives you a small clap and says, all right, children, she seems to have the knack for it. And um, he uh, looks over at the Falcon and uh, looks over at you again and says, well, tell her where to go. Uh, I ask, Does, is there a certain language I have to speak to it? No, as long as you point and be direct with your words, um, he should get the point. Um, so, like, what are my surroundings? Is it just a big open field? It's a huge open field, and then behind you are the walls. Um. Okay, so. And actually, actually wait, where, um, wait, what, what wait, the, wait. What's the cat doing right now? Oh, okay, well, what are you going to say? Uh, okay, so if you go far enough, uh, forward, um, like, um, outside the walls, uh, that's actually the drop-off for the cliff. I should have mentioned that. There's a cliff? Oh. Yes, your city resides upon a very tall cliff. Oh, okay. Um, so now, what, what's the cat doing right now? What's the cat doing? Yeah, what the, what's the cat doing? Uh, the cat seems to be exploring around, uh, sort of um, trying to paw at some um, leftover uh, falcon food. Okay, so I, I th I'm not going to pull out the just tell it to point the cat card. I'm going to, like... N like uh, not like as far away from the cat as I can point in just a random spot in the field like sternly like point there okay go, see if it goes there make an animal handling check that's what we got this proficiency for so I add plus one since I have a proficiency right yes well I mean you add plus two but since it's a minus one technically it's just a plus one in the end well I got a seven either way so okay <laughs> Sounds good. I still suck at handling animals, dude. Um, you point sternly and uh, tell them uh, to go there. And um, the falcon kind of just looks over at you. Shit. Uh, Hudok says, oh, don't worry. Uh, the first couple tries are usually quite... Um... Huh. That's interesting. And he looks up in the sky and sort of gets some spectacles out. Um, which seem to be uh, almost like long glasses. Um, outside game, they're binoculars. And the, he puts them on his face and looks into the sky over next to the mountainside. And he's silent for a moment. And uh, Sarah sort of looks at you confusingly and says, Hop, hop, and uh, points to her arm. And um, the falcon flies off your arm and comes to hers. Oh, okay. So, eventually, uh, Hudok puts his uh, binoculars down and says, Well, um, maybe we should end early today. Um... There seems to be a storm raging up on the mountains. Uh-oh. He looks at you uh, and says, Priscilla, you did magnificent today. Um, if you keep showing up this early and uh, put this much effort into it, you'll get a hang of it in no time. Thank you, sir. Yes, of course. Now, hurry back to your homes. Um, the storm seems to be building. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll head on home. All right. So, you head home, uh, and the cat follows. Um, so, eventually, uh, the cat uh, and you uh, get to your home, and uh, your mother and father are already inside. And um, they uh, tell you um, it's something that's been weird has been happening in the mountainside. There seems to be a giant storm brewing. Uh, pretty much everyone in the town has been ordered to stay in homes. Yeah, yeah, that our uh, our practice today at the Falconeers was cut short because the because Hudog noticed the storm. Huh, this is very concerning. Um, usually uh, storms don't come down this far, but uh, this one seems to. And uh, he looks out the window and says, "Yes, it's growing and it's coming towards us." Uh, uh, we'll be fine, right, guys? I'm sure we'll be fine. Um. Well, just to be safe, we should just stay inside for tonight, okay? Yes, sir. Here, I have an idea. Let's 
It's been so long since we had a family game night. Let's do that. And he grabs in one of the drawers and pulls out a deck of cards and he puts it on the table. And he looks at all of you and says, well, and your mother sort of uh, looks down and says, wait, what? What did you say? And uh, he says, family game night. And uh, she says, well, I guess. What do you say? I'm all in. Uh, he says, that's very good. Let me show you how to play. And um, he uh, pulls out some cards and uh, he says, we'll stop, start you off with a game that everyone knows as a child. And he gives you some cards. And he says, it's called Catch the Dwarf. And out of character, it's a lot like Go Fish. Um, yeah, I remember it from the other campaign. With the okay. Brain. So apparently this is a popular game. Um, so uh, you eventually learn how to play. Uh, make an investigation check. We got a 10. All right. With that, uh, your father seems to easily beat you, and he boasts about it quite a bit. But uh, you beat your mother, mm -hmm. who seems to be sort of uh, not fully in the game. Damn. All right. So as you can just continue, you get a little bit better, but you never beat your father. And he seems to rub it in your face every time, playfully, of course. And... Um, Eventually, uh, the baby starts crying, and your mother says, All right, I'm out. I'm going to take care of the baby. And she brings it to her room and closes the door. Your father puts his hands on the table and uh, sighs for a moment and says, Oh, your mother. She was not the woman I married, but I still love her all the same. And he looks over at you and says, You know, she reminds me a lot of you when uh, I met her back in the day. What was she like when you met her? Um, she was wide-eyed and always searching for more. Um, she, he looks at you and says, Obviously, uh, you have some unique uh, attributes, and he pokes at your horns. And um, he uh, looks over at you and says, Other than that, you seem to be a lot like her, actually. Oh, <laughs> I'm not really sure how to respond and just my character's just gonna sit there and think i guess okay so with that uh you hear the baby start crying even more and um he says well to pass the time do you want to just keep playing um i might ask my mom if i can take care of layla because maybe i could like let layla play with uh, the kitty cat and that will calm her down okay um, yeah, I'm gonna go in my mom's room and say, Hey, mom, do you want me to take care of Layla? Alright, so as you enter the room, um, you creak it open, and you see, uh, your mom playing with Layla on the floor, and you hear her whispering something. What's your passive perception? Is that just what my wisdom is? Uh, ten plus your wisdom modifier. So, then I have nine, I think. Okay, with that, you barely hear what she's telling, uh, Layla. She seems to be singing, Priscilla, Priscilla. Um, okay. Very, just, just singing my name over and over again? Yes, seems to be. That is, uh, very bizarre. Well, if she's, like, actually, tr like, playing with her, then I'll just leave her be then. I okay. I won't interrupt her, whatever she's doing. Um, uh, make a stealth check. Hmm. Stealth. Uh, so we got a 17. Okay. With that, uh, she doesn't seem to notice you, and you slowly close the door behind you. And your father says, Well, um, are you not going to play with your sister? Um, no, mom is playing with her, and I don't want to interrupt what she's doing. Oh, well, yes, of course. And he says, Well, um, how about this? I'll get dinner ready, and uh, you can go off and do whatever you want. Just make sure you don't leave the house. Ah, oh, yes, sir. I'll I'll make sure not to do that. All right. So with that, um, you head into your room, I assume. Um. Yeah. Is the cat with me? Follow me in my room. Yep. He follows. Okay. So I'm in the room. My cat. Yep. You are. Um. I want to try to do what I did with the falcons and point to an area and say, go there to the cat. All right. Make an animal handling check. 
got that proficiency. Come on, don't fail me now. God, we got a six. Uh, he looks over at you and sort of meows and rubs against your leg. Dude, literally consistently, my character sucks at animals. <laughs> so with that, uh, um, your cat uh, uh, jumps up on the bed and then up on the windowsill and looks towards the sky at the storms. Um, well, I don't want to open the window because I don't want like any storm or like hard draft to get in. So, um, hmm. all right. So instead of like telling it where to go, can I just like, like, like talk to it and like ask, do you have a name? Um, so, uh, as you do, um, the cat sort of just looks at you and then looks up at the sky again. Can I try asking that in Draconic? All right, so uh, you do, and he looks at you again, and then looks at the sky. Okay, so either he doesn't care or can't understand me. So then I'll just, uh, I don't know, like, get that string from my hoodie and just play with it to entertain myself. And uh, he acts like it's not even there. Uh, he just keeps looking up. He is focused on this storm, okay. Well, if he's not paying attention to me, then I'm... So, in my room, the only thing I have to entertain myself is, like, sleeping in my toys? Yep, pretty much. Well, then I'm... I'm... I guess I'll just fiddle with some toys, I guess. Alright, so, with that, uh, eventually, the storm heads down over the town. And it starts bellowing. Um, lightning striking, uh thunder rolling and um uh rain pelting every surface that it can and your set your cat seems to be uneasy sort of coming in circles and setting down and standing up and um when the storm gets over the town uh the cat starts pawing at the window hmm. i wanna wanna go over the cat and like pet it to try and calm it down all right make an animal handling check come on gonna rip come the tail on. off <laughs> no, don't rip the tail off. Okay, I almost... Okay, we got a 12. I almost got a 4. Alright, uh, with that, the cat seems to calm down just a little bit, and he looks over at you, and then looks towards the sky, and paws out the window. I, but I, like, I don't want to open the window, because I don't want the cat to die. And I don't want me to like get a cold because of how anything, so I'm not going to open the window for it. Okay. He meows loudly. Hmm. I mean, I, I still don't want to open the window. All right, so he just keeps He's meowing. He's got to teleport out there if he wants out there. He keeps meowing at you, and eventually uh, you hear a knock on um, the door, and your dad says, dinner ready. Um, well, oh, I'm going to go out and eat some dinner then. All right. So, your cat just keeps meowing, and uh, your dad looks over at your room and says, Huh, uh, do you hear that? Must have been the wind. <laughs> I guess so. And he walks over to the dinner table and starts eating with you. And he says, uh, <laughs> your mother won't be joining us today. She wants to play with Layla. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's, uh, then there were two. Um, alright, so do you just eat dinner? And go back to your room? Yeah, I'm going to eat dinner, chat with my dad about things. Not like a specific thing, just like mm -hmm. little chit-chats and stuff. All right. So with that, um, you uh, eventually finish dinner, and uh, he says, I'm going to check on your mother. Oh, okay. Make sure she's okay. And I'm guessing she's just going to go into the room? Yep. Um, I'm going to go back to my room, make sure the cat is there. All right. So... As you walk back into your room, uh, you see that the cat is no longer there. Um, make sure he's not under the bed. Yeah, he's not under there either. All right, well. Yeah, I guess, I guess if I hear him, I hear him. I'm going to, like, sit on my bed, maybe try to see if I can fall asleep. All right, with that, uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Nat 20. Okay, with that, even though you're worried about your cat, um, you do fall asleep quite easily. 
and uh eventually you wake up and uh oh with like uh water on your face it seems to be dripping from the ceiling onto your bed yeah, and the storm water. storm is still raging still wow mm -hmm. um so I'm like just awake and it's really wet. Is like uh, it's, it wet seems to like it seems to still be the middle of the night. Um, you only have slept a couple hours. Oh damn! Let me get that great of a sleep. Um, I see the cat in my room again. Is he back? No. Uh, as you look around, um, the only thing you uh, see slash hear is tapping on the window. Oh, is he? Oh, is he out the window? Is he on the outside? Uh, you look over and it seems to be a soaking wet cat on the other side, sort of oh, meowing well, and pawing. I gotta open the door to let him in. I gotta open the window to let him in. Alright, so you open the window, uh, the wind blows very strongly, and your cat hops in and shakes himself off, and, um, uh, you close the window again. And he seems to, uh, be, uh, shivering. Oh. Let me, uh, let me, like, put, let me try to put a, one of my blankets on him. Alright. To warm him up. So, um, a puddle is now forming on your bed from the ceiling dripping. Uh, you, uh, put one of your blankets around him and make an animal handling check. Come on. Don't suffocate it. <laughs> okay, 14. Alright. He seems to, uh, embrace you in the sort of swaddle that you give it. Mm, nice. I'm so, just gonna keep holding him, petting him, trying to warm him up. All right. The more you stand there, uh, the more uh, th your bed is now getting absolutely soaked. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We're not sleeping on the bed tonight, I guess. All right. So with that, what do you wish to do? Uh, the cat seems to be now asleep in your arms. Um. Am I, where, am I like just in the middle of the room? Yeah. Well, can I like scoot up against the wall and maybe try to fall asleep that way with the cat in my yeah, lap? Yeah, you can. Um, make a wisdom saving throw. Um, that's gonna be a seven. All right, with that, it's pretty hard to fall asleep, and eventually it takes you about an hour to do. So, um, you sleep in quite a bit, and you eventually hear a knock on your door, and um. The cat is the to your side. Still raging when I wake up. No, it is not. The storm seems to have subsided, and uh, okay. eventually your uh, father opens the door and says, "Hello, um, oh, what happened to your bed?" Uh, some water started leaking from the ceiling, and it got all wet. So I didn't want to sleep in it anymore. I wanted to just sleep over here. I see. Well, we're gonna have to fix that. And uh, he grabs your bed sheets and rips them off and uh, starts uh, trying to dry the bed. And he says, I don't think you should go to the Falconeers today. Most of the people um, are staying inside. Um, some of the, the houses on the north side actually got blown over. So some people are going to help. Oh, like you think um, so like are the, but can if I wanted to, could I still go? Um, I don't think that they're in session today. No, then I, then I probably shouldn't then, yeah. I would stay inside today. Um, actually, it's quite beautiful out. Would you, uh, perhaps like to walk around the town? Yeah, I'll walk around the town with you, or, or really actually, just around. Um, I will be here cleaning the bed, so how about you just go around the town? Oh, um... Yeah, I'll love to have a little walk. Yeah, that might be fun. All right, and with that, um, he uh, says goodbye to you and says, "Here, let me give you something." And he gives you uh, five gold pieces. I got five gold. He says, "Buy whatever you'd like." Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, and with that, do you wish to just head outside with your cat? Um, yeah, kitty cat's following me. All right. So, I'm going to bring up the map real quick. Uh, I'll forget to see the map. I'm uh, not, Navia. Don't want that. Um, uh, I'm not over there, I don't think. No, you're not. Uh, this is the right one, Recoon. So, uh, he gives you a map as you leave also. So, um, so you... I have the 
this. You have this in your inventory. Uh, make sure you write that down. Uh, map of Recoon or Recoon map. I should probably take a picture of it, right? Uh, I would recommend it. Why did I write an F? Okay. Fakeun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> camera. I just have to take a picture of my TV. Where, uh, where is the Falconeer spot? Uh, that would be in Donborough. Outside the walls. I see. And where's the, the cliffside? Is it on the map, or is it past that? Um, so if you go, uh, down and left, that's the cliffside. Okay. It's off the map. Where's my house? Your house is in the middle of the upper district. And, uh, the Just grove... Smack dab in the middle? Uh, pretty much. And the grove is where you usually see the kids. Uh, where's the shops at? The shops? You don't know. You've never been. You know, the floor right. shops are in the grove, but that's buildings. it. Um, can I, can I see that, that building that seems to be surrounded by walls, is that like the, like a castle or like a big capital thing or something? Yes, you know it to be, uh, the capital, which is housing, um, the governor. And, uh, your parents have told you before that the governor resides in this place. Hmm, okay. Well... I mean, I would assume that there would be shops around the governor's place, since that might be, like, a spot people go to often. All right, so, so would you like to approach over there? Yeah, I'll try to go over to the governor building. All right, so as you do, uh, you see some guards out with uh, seeming to be leather armor, kind of just chit-chatting with each other. The day is probably the most beautiful you've ever seen. Um, it's actually pretty warm out, and uh, the sun is in the sky without a cloud uh uh, f spanning the entire sky and eventually you walk over there and um, you look around and what you see is a couple of different shops um, I was right you uh, you see over to your left um, a uh, shop that just uh, looks like a general market store uh, you look over and uh, you also see what seems to be a, like a blacksmith shop um, mm -hmm. also see I don't think I'd want a weapon so a potter shop and a wood carver shop. And finally, uh, you see a dyer shop. A dyer shop? What's a dyer shop? Uh, D Y E R. They dye things. Oh, they just make things colors. Yes, it seems to be pretty small, but nonetheless, it's there. Hmm. So we got a mark, a general marketplace. Uh... A blacksmith, a dyer, and what was the other one? Potter and wood carver, I believe. Potter. I'm going to see what's in the general marketplace. All right. So as you enter, you see a uh, sort of old looking man say, Oh, hello, young lady. Uh, what are you in the market for? Um, I'm kind of just in the market for anything that kind of like seems interesting, really. Well, let me show you my wares. Um, give me a second. I need to pull it up. I'm so sorry. Hopefully one of these shops specializes in clothes for invisible teleporting cats. <laughs> yes. I could, give, I could give my cat a little bow tie. <laughs> we sell oh, teleporting bow ties for kitty cats. <laughs> He's selling kind of like Bane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking when the cat was really wet, if the dad walked in at that time, would it just see it an outline of water in the shape of a cat? Uh, assuming so, <laughs> yes. It's like the Invisible Man. If you paint the cat, you just see paint. Something yeah. like that. You, like, my dad would probably think I'm like a water sorcerer or something like that. And so every time you need to convince someone you're a water sorcerer, you just dunk your cat in water. <laughs> <laughs> dunk him in some water as to hold him up. For my next trick, I will make a cat. Uh, can you make anything other than a cat? Um... No, shut up. 
I can make <laughs> a cat paw. <laughs> <laughs> I can make a cat face. I can make a floating bow tie. <laughs> 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 Uh, I do want to give him a bow tie now. I, that's what I want to do. I can make a teleporting water cat as well. <laughs> I can make it teleport. I and have very I can specific make a... powers. <laughs> I can make this bow tie teleport as well. Man, I, I can't find it. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Um... Here. Okay, there it is. There it you is. You have the map of Raccoon up on the stream, by the way, unless you wanted that to No, go. that's completely fine. I don't care. Um, okay. So, he shows you around, and, uh... Is there anything out of character you're looking for? A bow tie. <laughs> a bow tie. Yes, Got it. a bow tie for the cat. Uh, he does not have a bow tie. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Damn it. Um, well, I guess I'm looking for, like, any form of just little trinket or, like, maybe, like, a necklace I can wear? I don't know, because I'm a girly girl. I don't like um, jewelry. So, this is a general store he tells you, and he does not sell jewelry here. Does I ask him, does he know where jewelry would be sold? Uh, he says, maybe a blacksmith if you're lucky. Hmm. But he I'll says if him. you're looking for trinkets, uh, he has many. And, um... Oh, what, kind, what kind of trinkets? He says, um, well, uh, you're gonna have to, uh, be able to learn how to use them, but, uh, I do have some tools, and, uh, he tells you of all the tools that he has for sale. Um, seems to be, uh, do you just want me to go down the list? Yeah, tell me what kind of tools he's got. He's got carpenter's tools, cobbler's tools, cook's tools, glass blower's tools, leather worker's tools, mason's tools, ponder's tools, smith's tools, weaver's tools, wood carver's tools. Hunter's tools might be interesting. What what are the hunter's tools? What actually are they? Oh, it's actually potter's tools, not hunter's tools. Damn, never mind then. And that's all he's got? For tools, uh, for tools yeah. No. No. Um, I, I don't think he's got much that I want, really, then. Okay. So, uh, do actually, you wish... I'll ask him one more thing. Does he know where a clother would be? Uh, he tells you that if you're looking for a tailor, uh, that would be in the grove. The grove. Okay. Thank you, sir. I, I leave. All right. So, uh, you leave, and now you're at the general area again. What do you wish to do? So, what's more important, a shiny necklace or a bow tie for the cat? Well, uh, my thought process is you only have five gold. So, even if you do find a shiny necklace, you probably can't afford it. Probably. Um... Quick little thing out of character. Have I ever been referred to as a dragon or a dragonborn yet by somebody? Uh, no, never. You've never even okay, heard the so. word dragon before. I think your only okay. context for you being different is those kids poking your face. Yeah. No, I, think, I, I, I guess I just think that's... Seconds. Yeah, and being an alcohol. I, so, I don't think I'd, like... Maybe I would look, look for a book about races or something. Like the different races of the world. Okay. I could do that. Is there like a library around? You can look for one. Um. Hmm. All right. So now our new priority: actual information that will give me character development or a bow tie for the cat. <laughs> I think you know what, what you have to important? do. I think you know what you have to do. I know what I have to do. All right. We're heading to the grove, and we're gonna try and get a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, eventually, uh, you head over to the grove, and uh, you see uh, many children playing out. Uh, some of them even recognize. And uh, you see the, the, the marketplace for uh, different foods, and uh, you see the florists. And you also see your mother. And she looks over at you and runs towards you and says, What are you doing out here? Um, well... Dad, like, my bed got soaked, and Dad is trying to fix it, and he said I could, like, go around town while he's fixing it. Your father said it was okay to leave the house? Yeah, like, what, what's the problem here? Go back to the house. Go inside. All right, I'll cut you a deal. You tell me where a clother is, and I might go home. Uh, make a persuasion check. <laughs> you know, the thing is, like is that... 
But if I what do give it? the cat a bow tie, unless it's like made with magical energy, it's just gonna be a floating bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm thinking is, it doesn't seem like anyone really cares or notices that you're a dragonborn. So. Well, I got a nat 20, so. Dude, save some of those for your animal handling checks, please. You got a natural I know, 20? Right? I got a nat, nat 20, yeah. She looks down in size for a moment and says, Do you realize what people say about you? What they say about me? Uh, no, not really. Whatever. You know what? Do what you want, because it's, you're not my problem anymore. And she chews you off. Well, fine. I don't want to be your problem, bitch. You actually say that? I kind of want to. Do you? Yeah, yeah, fuck it. Fuck you. you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she turns yeah, around. I don't want to be your problem anymore. And starts walking towards you again and says, This is why I love Layla more than you. And walks away. Well, Layla loves me more than you. She does not. She ignores you and keeps walking. So, where's the clothing? <laughs> All right, so make a perception check. Uh, perception is wisdom. I got a 16. All right, so with that, uh, you do see a small, small tailor shop. Uh, they don't seem to have much, but uh, they uh, get by. Um, do you wish to approach? Yes. All right, let us see here. Sorry, I'm trying to find it. Tie, bow, tie, bow, tie. There we go. Bow, tie. He's gonna be a dapper cat. Maybe a monocle as well. <laughs> <laughs> a bow tie, a monocle, and a top hat. <laughs> All right. So you approach and you see a fine young man uh, who runs the shop, um, and it seems to be just a tent for now. And uh, he asks, "Oh, uh, what are you in for?" Oh, I would like to have a uh, add a game. Is a bow tie like an actual thing that P characters in D and D know what that is? Uh, yes, you you've seen it before on uh, what seem to be like just passerbys uh, that are very wealthy. Okay, so I can ask for a bow tie. Um, I would like uh just like a small uh bow tie, tailored, please. Oh, I see. How small are we talking? Uh. So I, what kind of, I'm like the size of like a, a young child, like young infant. Um, I see. Well, uh, uh, I, I guess, um, sure. Um, and, uh, he brings out his tailoring supplies and he starts writing down something on a parchment paper and he seems to write down ingredients that he needs. And, um, he looks over at you and says, well, this is going to cost a little bit because it's going to be specialty made, of course, and it's going to take me time. Are you all right with this? Uh, how, how much are we talking cost wise? Um, two gold. All right. Um, what kind of, what kind of material are you going to be trying to make it out of? Oh, uh, silk, of course, because that's what mm. bow ties are usually made of. Hmm. Understandable. Understandable. Um, seems like a good deal to me. Uh, is there a certain color you want? Because I can go to the dye shop and, uh, for an extra price, I can dye it for you. Uh, if I didn't specify a color, what color would it be? Black. Black. Well, because he's a black cat, um, that wouldn't stand out too well. Um, obviously I don't actually say this to him. Um, <laughs> what, what, what color? I was thinking red in my head. It would or, stand out to some people. It's know. just a floating red bow tie. <laughs> maybe, maybe like purple to match his eyes. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna go with purple. Okay. Um, with that, he says it'll be an extra five silver to dye it. Are you all right with that? Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, he eventually uh, reaches out for the gold. Um. So do I hand him the money? Do you want to? Well, actually, wait. Um, I say, 
can I pay you once it's actually made? He says, uh, the best I can do is half now, half later. All right. And so, yeah, I'll pay him half now. Okay. So, uh, make sure you minus, uh, what would that be? Uh, so it's two gold and five silver. So that would be one gold and we'll just round up and say one gold and three silver. Yeah, sure. Let's just go with that. So we are at, uh, four gold and two silver. Okay. Um, how long would it take to make the, the thing? He tells you uh, he will approach your house and he asks for your uh, address on this map and says, do you just point at it? Um, uh, um, sure. All right. He also asks for your name. Priscilla. All right. And uh, he says... In about a week's time, I will approach you and uh, give you uh, the bow tie. Um, please have the money by then. Yes, sir. Thank you for your business. Yes, of course. And he says, pleasure to do work with you. By the way, how long is he? Uh, I mean, he's talking about how old is the baby. Um, so compared in size, how big is Layla to uh, the cat? About the same size. Oh, so oh wait, no, no, no. Since Layla? since she's aging quicker, uh, she's about twice its size. So I'm not gonna say her. Um, um I'm gonna. Uh, uh, okay, I know what I'm say. Um, I don't want to be rude, but I don't really want to like say like tell him. Uh, let's just say like we're keeping it a secret. Oh, I see, I see. Well, none of my business. And he says, well, uh, if you wish to have anything else made, uh, come to me. Um, I'll keep that in mind. And he, uh, as you're turning to leave, uh, he sort of looks at you and says, by the way, I love the horns. Uh, thank you, sir. You're not too bad yourself. He asks you, how, how uh, much was it to be made? Or are you a tiefling? Uh, kind of just came like this. Oh, I see. Well, huh. uh, to each his own, and uh, he sort of gets back to work. Okay. So in a week, so I gotta, I gotta pass a week by. Um, Look for that book. Yeah, maybe. So actually, yeah, that makes sense now. Since he <laughs> called me a tiefling, yeah, I'm gonna try and find a library. All right. So, eventually you look around. Any area in the map that you want to particularly look? Um, Ask the tailor if he knows where a library would be. Like, am I still by him? You can go back in and ask him. Um, yeah, I'll go back and say, oh, and by the way, do you know where a, uh, where a library might be? Uh, he looks at you and says, well, there's uh, two libraries here in the town. Uh, there's uh, the general one down in the lower district, and there is the premium one in the upper district. Uh, what's the difference? Well, um, certain books haven't been recopied yet and uh, aren't allowed back in the general public yet, um, so they keep them in the premium district, um, in the premium uh, library, and uh, it costs quite a bit to get in. Um, you can either buy a membership or uh, you can pay as you go in. Hmm. Does the, isn't the general one is free to go in? Yes, of course. Hmm. Thank you for, thank you, sir. For telling me yes of course and he goes back to uh sewing well are dragonborn like a rare race of people um you have no idea you don't know what a dragonborn is you don't know what a dragon oh, yeah, is that, yeah that wouldn't make sense for me to be able to ask that that would kind of be metagamey yeah um i'll go to the, i'll try to go to the lower district one first all right so as you enter in, uh, you see that it's a uh, pretty small library, uh, seeming to be only like one room, really. And there seems to be books everywhere. Uh, there's a girl uh, with uh, glasses and short blonde hair that you recognize as Sarah. And she looks up at you and says, oh, hello, um, Priscilla, right? Oh, yes. What are, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, I work here. I'm one of the librarians. Oh, and you're a falconer? Yes, well, I mean, 
uh, the falconeers uh, pay quite a bit, but um, I have always enjoyed literature quite a bit. Oh, well, maybe you could help me out. I'm trying to find a book on races of the world. Um, you mean like uh, the different people uh, of like the world and stuff? Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, of course. Um, here, I actually know quite a bit about them. Um, what do you have to ask? Maybe I can answer your question for you. Um, what what is a tiefling? A tiefling? Um, I've heard a little bit about them. Uh, although, uh, they aren't quite accepted, uh, in many places, especially not here. Um, they, uh, are, the folklore say that they are half human, uh, half something, uh, from the underground, as they say. They seem to be half monsters. Um... Do I look like a tiefling? She looks over at you and looks at your horns and says, Well, I've never really heard or seen a picture of, uh, or seen a drawing of a tiefling that looks quite like that. I mean, I wouldn't assume so, especially because of, well, I don't know. I've never seen one. Hmm, weird. Aren't there any other races that have um, horns or eyebrows like mine? Well, uh, the only ones I know about are the satyrs, and uh, satyrs don't exactly look like that. Ooh, what are satyrs like? Um, basically, picture uh, half goat, half uh, people. Hmm. Hmm. Definitely not one of those. Yes, hopefully not. Uh, the tales of them span uh, throughout the entire world. I mean, uh, the satyrs are um, that of a barbaric people. Um, she looks down for a moment and sort of smiles to herself and says, I mean, of course, I've never seen a satyr myself, but um, I've read a bit about them. Apparently, they control with an iron fist uh, one of the towns. Um, uh, she says that the town is uh, ruled by satyrs and uh, people of the Underdark, and uh, it's an evil lair of um, uh, basically um, unholy creatures. Ooh. That's a, that sounds really interesting, actually. Um, well, so she didn't, she said, so she doesn't have any books about? Like, she says races? she does. She just said that she might be able to answer questions if you had them. Well, I'm going to ask, though, so thank you, but I'd still like to uh, read one of the books on races of things. Of course. Um. Here, let me show you where they are. And uh, she walks back to the back room and dusts some of the books off. And uh, seems to be, uh, most of them are in common. Some of them are in other languages. Uh, what languages do you know? Uh, well, I know common and draconic. Okay. Well, none of them are in draconic. Uh, most of them seem to be common. And she says, well, um, you can pick from any of these. I will be at the front desk if you need anything. Okay. So all the books that she showed me are about races? Um, they seem to be a variety of that. Uh, some of them to be, seem to be adventure tales, uh, seem to be fiction. Uh, others seem to be non-fiction, uh, stating of, uh, travels of explorers looking for the great unknown. Well, i just like to try to pick up, like, a, a book about information of races that's obviously in common. All right. So, um, actually, the way I do research is I'm going to have you make, a, an investigation check. For each book like right now um well do you pick up do you pick which which book do you pick up one of the more fiction ones or one of the more non-fiction ones well, I, well like i'm just looking for information so obviously a non-fiction one okay so uh you pick up one of the non-fiction ones and uh it seems to be uh titled um the travel uh the traveling tales of um tessel and um they uh, seem to be, uh, there are a lot of sketches, pictures in there on the parchment papers, and um, also uh, contains a lot of descriptions of different animals that are around, and even once in a while you see some races. Okay, well, I'll try looking in this book then. All right, so uh, you look into the book, uh, so make an investigation check, and tell me what you're looking for specifically. Um, well, does this library have like a like a chair or a couch or something I can sit in. You see a table uh, near the back with a chair on it. Well, just for comfort's sake, I'd like to, you know, like sit down while yeah, I, okay. I want to just stand in the aisle. Yes. Uh, so I'm investigating. Should I investigate creatures with horns or about the cat? 
first. Uh, are you asking me or just thinking? Um, asking out loud, and you are very welcome to give input. Well, it just depends on what you want to know more about. Because, well, what would your character, especially after that tiefling comment, would they still want to know about the cat, or would they be thinking about? Uh, is the cat following things? me still? Is he in the library? Um, he seems to be looking at the different books and like trying to knock some over. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll let him do that. Yeah, I'm going to investigate about myself. I'm just going to try to find information about races with like horns and stuff. All right. So Cause that's uh, all I know about me. Make an investigation check. I'm not gonna find anything at all, dude. I got a sixth. All right, with that, um, what you mainly see in the horns, uh, like trying to look for pictures of horns and like things that say horns, uh, you notice many passages about different rams that are bred throughout the world, and also yeah. of a uh, group of people called the satyrs. Um, you kind of skimmed through it just because uh, you've already uh, were told about the satyrs, and uh, it seems to be a um, uh, the picture that is drawn of them is that of uh, almost like a demon-like creature with uh, like large uh, spiraling spiraling horns coming out of the forehead. All right, well, definitely not one of those. So. Okay. So uh, I Maybe allow... I'll try to also look for cat information. Well, what were you going to say first? Uh, for each book, I allow you to do three investigation checks. Okay. And each so... one takes about an hour. Uh, how, how long have I been outside right now? Um, You've been out for about four hours. Is it still like midday? Yeah. Evening? Like, oh, it's midday? Yep. All right. I'm going to try to f see if I can find anything on the kitty cat. All so, right. So like... I don't know, small, black, furry creatures with tails. All Maybe right. the teleporting part, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, make an investigation check. Are you using the same book, or are you just switching books? Let's go. We got 19. No, Cameron had a good point. What are you doing? Um... Maybe, oh yeah, should it be the same book? Well, I got a 19 on the investigation check. I'm not changing. Well, that. okay, so since you're researching, I would say the best thing for you is just have a bunch of books open. Uh, just tell me if they're nonfiction or fiction. Um, yeah, okay, so I have this nonfiction book, and I'll try to, I'll grab one of the fiction ones as well. Okay, so, um, as you look through, uh, you're looking for furry creatures that are small and have tails, right? And the teleporting part, maybe. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, as you look through, uh, you easily find a passage on what seems to be what they call cats. Um, they say yeah. um, it is a descendant of a sort of feline creature and have uh, loose ties to um, what seems to be uh, almost human-like uh, creatures. Um, you also see that... Um, down on the different pages. You don't see anything about teleporting or anything like that, but you do see a, a sketch of what seems to be a looking like uh, your cat, but with a different color. Oh, so now my character knows what a cat is. Yes. Okay. So we got the information about the cat. Um, so I only looked through the non-fiction one about races with horns. So now I'm going to look through the fiction one about races with horns. Okay, sounds good. Um, that be it, since I'm only about three. Okay, so uh, with that, you just wish to go through all the fiction books looking for species with horns? Yeah, do I roll a thing? Yep, roll investigation. Let's go, we got a 17. All right, so as you look through, uh, you uh, notice another passage about satyrs. Um, sort of a, a, a folklore tale about how they go and steal and eat children. Um, you also notice a passage uh, in a fiction book about, uh, since you were just skimming through the chapters, um, you uh, read the chapter, it's almost like an inner monologue of someone slaying a giant creature with uh, giant horns and fiery breath. Ooh. Out of character, I know this might be a Dargon. So do I continue reading this passage? Uh, well, since you are pretty much done for your checks with this, uh, any book that seemed interesting to you, you can read fully. It will take about a couple days, though. Um, so then 
I only skimmed that chapter. Okay, so I'm gonna take that book with that chapter, go up to Sarah and ask, uh, may I, um, take this book home for a few days and read it? She looks over at you and says, of course, um, just sign the book out. Write the title and the date you borrowed it and your name. Um, what is the title? Just curious. Um, so, um, it looks to be, uh, Fables of a Gone By Time. Right. All right, so I do what she says, write it, the name, the date, and my name. All right, so she says, uh, it's quite a good read. Um, have you gotten very far in it? Um, no, I was just skimming it, and I saw this thing about this person who slayed a huge monster with horns and fire breath, and that kind of caught my interest. Oh, well, that's quite the spoiler. Uh, if you're looking to read it, I wouldn't read ahead very much. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna read ahead anymore. Okay, well, um, let me know how it goes. See ya. Thank you. Alright, so you head back. Uh, is there anywhere else you wish to go? What time is it? Uh, it seems to be about um, two o'clock in the afternoon. It's not too too late. Um, so I got a book. I don't want to pay to get into the upper district. Um, I got the I got my sick bow tie. I know what a cat is now. I pissed my mom off. Yeah, this was an eventful day. I think I'll go home. Okay, so uh, you head home. Your father doesn't seem to be there. Uh, you're just, uh, there by yourself and your cat. Uh, do you wish to just keep reading the book? Yeah, I'll start, I'll start, like, reading it from, like you said, you read the entire thing from the beginning to the end. Okay, sounds good. Um, the more you read about it, the more you understand that this seems to be, uh, almost, uh, meant for, uh, young, uh, uh, young adults, uh, like yourself. So, um, mm -hmm. since this is, um, one of your first books you read, you have struggles uh, here and there reading some words, but eventually you sound them out and you're okay with it. So, um, with that, um, uh, I think I want to take a little bit of a break. I know it's still kind of early, but, um, I think now's a good yeah. time. Yeah, it seems fine to me. All right. So, uh, we will be right back. Uh, thank you all for uh, watching so far and make sure you, uh, continue forward with, uh, the part two of our chapter two. Um, we will be right back. See ya.
All right, and we're live. Let's go. All right. So, uh, do you wish to just spend the rest of your day just reading? Yes. Just read. Okay. So, you seem to be... Uh, what Do you want to read in the main uh, sort of living room place or uh, your room? Has my bed been fixed? Uh, your bed is now drying. It's drying, but it's yes. dry. -y. No, it is not dry. -y. So then I will just sit in the kitchen because that's where dry -y is. Okay, so eventually um, you uh, just keep reading the book and uh, your uh, father returns home and he looks over at you and says, Well, uh, how's your day out in the uh, out in the town? It was pretty good. Went to a shop, didn't find anything. Uh, went to went, went to the grove, yelled at my mom. She yelled at me. And then I got wait, 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 wait. What? What happened? And I went to the grove and then she yelled at me to go back inside. And she said, you're not my problem. And that made me angry. So I said, well, I don't want to be your problem. I see. And then she said that she loved Layla more than me. So that was not great. She said that but to then you? then I went and got a book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you okay? Listen. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm fine, yeah. Your mother has been through a lot. And I just... I don't know. Maybe it's my fault. I I don't know. And he looks at you and says... How could anything be your fault? She seems to be going through a lot of stuff right now. I don't really get... You've been doing as much as you can for this family, Dad. You shouldn't... You shouldn't... You shouldn't think down of yourself about anything. Make a persuasion check. Or a deception check, if that's what you're going for. <laughs> it's, it's not a deception check. <laughs> Come on. Let's go! 19. All right. Actually, wait, because I have a plus one, it's a 20. Not a Ooh. 20, it's a 20. Nice. So, eventually, um, <clears throat> uh, your father looks over at you and says, Thank you for your kind words. Sometimes I don't even know myself. And he looks over at you and says, anyway, so what book are you reading? Um, so how far have I read into it? Do I like know the basic story? Uh, you've gotten for the first couple chapters. You know the basic story to be a, a young man who is um, seeming to be um, a, a poor peasant in a uh, pretty much medieval area. And uh, he is um, going out into the wilderness to try uh, to find a mythic item that might help him on his journeys. And then I tell him, I tell my dad that. He says, oh, well, do you have a knack for reading? Do you like it? Um, yeah, it's been pretty entertaining so far. Well, uh, here, I might give you something. And uh, he goes back to his room and pulls something out. Uh, he hands you a slip of parchment paper that seems to be dyed purple and has uh, black ink on it. And, um... It, uh, he gives it to you and says, well, this is a voucher for um, a uh, uh, free entry into uh, the premium library, if you are interested. Ooh, Sarah did tell me about that. Like, can I use this infinitely to get in? Yes, I mean, as long as we renew it, uh, it should be good for about a year. Oh, do I have, once I go in, do I have to pay again for the books or? Oh, um, once you... Once the thing expires, you need to pay every time you enter. Oh, okay. Just Thank please you, don't. Dad, and I yes. Give him a big hug. Yes. Don't don't lose it, please, honey. Um, it's quite a it cost us quite a bit. I bought it for your mother for her birthday, but um, she doesn't use it very much. Um. So, just in case, my character is always going to be thinking I need to make sure I don't lose this thing. Okay. Sounds good. Um. Yeah. Uh, he looks over at you and says, well, what made you want to start going to the library? Um, so oh, let me real quick. I should write my inventory like voucher, right? Oh, yeah. Put library voucher. Okay. Um, so you asked me why I got into reading. Yes. It's like, um, I don't know. I was kind of, I was just like walking around the town looking for things to do. And I noticed the the library. I was like, maybe I can try read something. And uh, it's really cool that my 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 in my person that I'm supposed to be an intern for in the Falconeer School actually works there. So that was very very cool. Uh, he says yes. Um, right. Um, well, uh, if you ever have any questions for us, um, 
I know, uh, me and your mother, when you were born, we did lots and lots of research on what illness you might have contracted. Um, he looks at you. illness? Am I going to be okay? No, 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 no. Uh, we looked through all the books about illnesses, and uh, we couldn't find anything. So it, it definitely is not that. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's good. I don't want to die. That, that, that would be not good. He tells you, no, no, no. There are no illnesses around the world that could have done this. Uh, he tells you that um, they tried to keep it under wraps for a long time, but would contact uh, outside doctors every once in a while when you're just a little child. Um, I don't think my character would have the two cents to think this is about like my horns or anything. Oh, uh, nice he implies tail. it's your horns. <laughs> Okay, well... Hmm. Say, so is there something wrong with me? Or am I, am I okay? If he looks at you and says, there's nothing wrong with you. Oh, thanks, Dad. Uh, he looks at Mom you and says... to agree. Uh, well, he looks at you again and says, um, well, your mother, when you were young, uh, tried her hardest and spent pretty much all of our money um, on trying to fix whatever illness that you had but when we learned that it was not an illness and more of a just a part of you uh, she sort of gave up a lot of hope wow it's kind of sad she gave up hope in me damn uh, he looks over at you and uh, kisses you on the forehead next to your horns and uh, he wow. looks over to your room and says, Well, um, I actually bought something for your room, so you won't have to worry about the leaking anymore. And uh, he pulls out no, some... Uh, he pulls out, like, uh, a, a utensil of some sort. And uh, he also brings um, uh, a sort of, like, uh, pastry in his hand. Uh, or paste, sorry, not pastry. Yes. And um, he uh, gets up on a, a sort of step stool, and he spreads it all over uh, the ceiling and says, Well, that should stop the leaking. No, oh, thank you. He says, of course. Um, just be careful. We're not sure when, where that storm came from, but uh, we uh, looked over in the mountaintops today, and we couldn't see any through the falcon's eyes. Hmm. That's very strange. Yes, it seems to be like a one-and-done situation, which is good for us. Yeah, let's hope it's gone. All right. Well, with that, um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Um... So, uh, going forward, uh, you have access to the premium library, to the regular library, to the town. You can go wherever you want. Uh, the cat follows. Um, he seems to be very happy um, just following you around. And uh, every yeah, once in a while... I, I, I'm still in the, like, the thing where I feed it some of my leftover food. Yes, of course. And uh, the cat seems to have a liking for Layla as well. Um, eventually, uh, you get to the point where... Uh, you can get back with the Falconeers and train with them. So, tell me, for the next couple of years, what are you prioritizing? I want to finish the bow tie. Yeah, oh, yeah, you did tie. get the bow tie. I will tell you that. You get, did get the bow tie. Okay. Um, now, how am I supposed to test if, the, if he makes the bow tie invisible? Uh, well, there's no real good way to test that. Um... And for now, I just, like, put it on him when he's with me, because it makes him look cute, and I like it. Yes, he actually so seems I'll to like the bow tie a lot. And... Oh, great. Okay, but whenever we're down public, I, I take it off and, like, put it somewhere he can't reach. Okay. Well, he can teleport, so that's besides the point. Yes. So, uh, other than that, prioritizations. Well, I want to I wanna, I wanna get good with the falcon ears, right? Uh, do you want to? Yeah, and I want to go into the library and do more research on races. Did I figure out anything from the book about dragonborns? Um, you did figure out that um, the monster in the book was not named, but you know it to be uh, a monster with giant horns and fiery breath and uh, scales, uh, almost like the ones that you have. Mm. Okay, well, yeah, Has I'm going gonna... to... Ever... Does Priscilla know about her breath abilities no still no she has no idea she can do that she knows in the book uh the dragon or, or the the creature the monster was able to um uh uh breathe fire breathe fire 
Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna train with the Falconeers, and in my my uh, like past times, I'm gonna go to the library and just read stuff. Okay, so those are your two priorities that you're mainly focusing on. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna make you make an animal handling check. Oh, oh. no! If any of them no. are important, it's this one. This one covers the span of years of training. Oh, uh, don't worry. There will be multiple. It's not just one. We got an eight. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. I suck so bad at animals. So, with that, um, your first uh, couple uh, weeks to a month of training uh, go okay. Um, they, um, you realize that the falcons don't really like you very much and um, yeah. only like you when you have a mouse to feed them. Uh, you realize when you have mouse, uh, like, to feed them, uh, you, the falcons listen to you much more. So, mm -hmm. going forward, uh, the next couple of months of training, uh, do you choose to switch up your tactics or uh, just keep it the same? Okay, so they just do they just not listen to me when I don't have my mouse? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna like train them dog dog style. I'm going if they do the thing, I'll feed them. If they don't do it, no. Okay, make an animal handling check. Come on. Okay, we got a 13. It's a bit better. All right. So with that, um, you eventually start training the one with Sarah, and uh, he starts listening to you more. And uh, um, uh, Hudok looks over at you and says, Wow, you've uh, really grown with your training. And um, he turns towards you and says, Well, um, yeah, I think it's time for a test. And um, he uh, brings you and Sarah out one day and uh, says, uh, Sarah, give him your falcon. And she hands you over the falcon just like normal. And he says, well, uh, I want you to um, ask the falcon to do a full sweep of the town. A full sweep of the town. So, I, okay, so I'll say that to the ear, point towards the town, and do like a circle motion in, like, in my, in with my hand. All right, make an animal handling check. Another, another one. Let's go, 20. Not nice. Nice, but it is the 20. So as you do, uh, the falcon uh, looks at you uh, for a moment confused, and as you again circle around, uh, he looks back up and uh, eventually flies up and uh, goes around the town and comes back. You feed it a mouse, correct? Yeah, because it did what I wanted. All right. Uh, Hudok says, oh, very, very good. Well, you've passed the test. And uh, the falcon <clears throat> hops over on Sarah's arm and says, well... I have something to give you, and um, is it my own falcon? Uh, he uh, goes into his tent and uh, pulls out something. It seems to be a badge. Um, he says, "I will sew. I will hand sew this onto your cloak if you'd like. Here, give it to me." Uh, like my fine cloak? Yes. Well, is that where you want your falconia logo to be? Um. Well, hell yeah, I want to flex that shit. Yeah. All right. So he sews it on. Sew it onto my dress. And it seems to be a. Uh, a uh, black uh, black uh, logo uh, made out of leather with a, uh, a logo of a feather on it that seems to be light blue. And um, he looks at you and says, well, welcome to the team. I can finally start paying you. Oh, let's go. Um, he says, well, uh, since it took a lot of training to get here, um, I will pay you starting off uh, two gold a day. Sounds good? Yes, sir. Uh, he looks over at Sarah and says, well, um, you should be the one that uh, helps her with her falcon. And uh, he gives her a wink, and Sarah smiles and says, follow me. Mm. So. All right. Uh, so she eventually leads you out to the sunset um, next to the cliff and uh, tells her falcon to just uh, survey the area. And she sits on the cliff with you. And she looks over at you and says, well, you've finally done it. You're a part of the team. Yeah, it feels, feels like it's been a long journey. Um, she looks at you and says, well, you still have a lot to go. It's only been over uh, a little over a half a year since you joined us. And um, she looks at you and says, well, time for uh, the exciting part. Um, we get to order Ooh. a falcon for you from uh, a distant land. Let's go. Um, she tells you that you have multiple choices in which falcon you do. Um, 
So, um, um, she tells you that you can either uh, spend more for an already trained falcon or spend less for uh, a, a new uh, new hatchling and you can train it from birth. Which would you li which would you like? I think I'll go with the training it from birth. All right. So with that, because you're so good at training them. <laughs> I know, right? Like the money, the money can money. Okay. Uh, she looks over at you and says, "Oh, that's what I did with mine." And she says, "Um, to be honest, Hander, or um, Hudok doesn't like us naming our falcons because we get too attached, just in case something happens to them. But we all name yeah, ours." Anyway. So, uh, just make sure, if you do name yours, don't say it around him. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I got you. Alright. So, she brings out a book, uh, seemingly from the library, and uh, she says, Here uh, are the different falcon types that I've compiled in my book. And she says, I'm about to publish it, actually. Uh, here, look through it. Ooh, I've got a sneak preview. Um, so, do you wish to look through the book in the different pictures? Yeah, so I can see what type of falcons I could try to get. All right, so she points out the first one, and she says, uh, do you recognize this one? And it looks to be a one-for-one -one drawing of uh, her falcon. <laughs> mm, yeah, it seems to be uh, ringing a few bells. Uh, she says, that's called a common kestrel, and uh, it is uh, sort of a tan falcon that is medium-sized and uh, is overall uh, kind of the jack-of-all-trades falcon. Hmm. So as you flip through, um, you see uh, the one that um, that Hudok and uh, uh, that Hudok has, along with. Uh... You think of the guy that has the really weird no, one. no, no, no. Uh, sorry, this is Geralt and Christian's falcon. Uh, she points out the oh. other one and says, "This is the common falcon, aka the peregrine falcon." And uh, she says it has brown feathers, and it's the one Christian and Geralt have. Uh, they're very easy to train, but um, are not as smart as the common kestrel. Well, I want mine to be big brain, so... Okay. So, um, eventually, uh, you uh, continue forward, and uh, through the book, you see um, what seems to be like Nicholas's falcon. Hmm. Okay. To get a little description. Uh, she tells you that uh, I wouldn't recommend this one to start off with. That's called a gyro falcon, and uh, she says it's the biggest, uh, one of the biggest falcons that she's ever met before, and is a, a great hunter. But uh, again, is very hard to train. Mm. Okay. Are there any more in the book? Yes, there are many more. Uh, is there anything you're looking at for in particular? Bigger ones, smaller ones, more intelligent, uh, more easy to train, less easy to train. Uh, smart. Smart. Really smart. I'm looking for the intelligent ones. All right. So, um, eventually, uh, she tells you, well, the smartest falcons that I've at least seen and that I've heard from um, Hudok are these three. And she points at one, and she, uh, it seems to be a sort of uh, medium-looking falcon to a smaller-looking falcon, and uh, it has uh, light blue uh, purplish feathers with black tips. Oh. She says, uh, this is a merlin, and she says that... This is a, a very smart falcon, um, but uh, and it is slightly easy to train. Uh, but um, she says uh, its size makes it easy prey for other uh, birds of prey in the area. Um, she flips to the pages again, and she goes to a medium-looking falcon with gray uh, feathers and sort of a sleek-looking design. She says this one is uh, very intelligent and very fast. Um, she tells you, but is very hard to train. Uh, she flips through uh, one more time and says. Well, there is one more, but I wouldn't recommend this one at all. And she points towards a very small-looking falcon, uh, the smallest one you've seen. Has uh, purple, uh, or no, not purple, blue and black and green feathers, and it seems to be about the size of um, your hand. And it seems to be kind of like a normal-looking uh, bird. Uh, she says, technically, this is a part of the falcon family, and it's, uh, it's called um, the Lesser Kestrel. And um, she says, uh, with falcon trainers, they never pick this one, but uh, apparently uh, they are um, very easy to train. Uh, they learn quickly, and uh, the only really downside is they are very slow, and uh, they are usually caught up by other uh, birds of prey in the area. Hmm. Well, we're not going to go with the last one. So the first one is like bluish purple. 
Uh, the first one mm. is bluish purple. The second one is uh, gray and white. And the third one is green, black, and blue. Yeah, so not going with the third one. So th they're both smart. The blue one was easier to train, right? Blue one was easier to train, but is a little bit smaller and not as fast. Um, and so the blue one's smaller, easier to train, not as fast. So the gray one is like just better, but harder to train. Yes. And we all know my stuff with the hand, with the animal handling. So we might go with the blue one. Also, blue and purple seems to kind of be my theme. Uh, Cameron, do you have a preference on which one you would choose out of all these? Wasn't there one that was kind of like just a regular jack of all trades kind of thing? Yeah, that was the common kestrel. That's the one Sarah has. Yeah, I, I if it was me, I would probably go for that. But I do like the color scheming, so. Yeah, I like the colors. And, and you could you could probably you could probably uh probably need the easier training <laughs> yeah, honestly yeah we're gonna go with the blue purple one all right so she tells you uh, that are you sure you want to go with the merlin the merlin yes all right well she closes the book and says great choice none of us have one um and it'll be great to see another uh, bird in the family remember we all flock together and um she stands up and goes back to hudok's uh little tent you follow in, and she tells uh, Hudok which one um, that you want. And he says, oh, that would be perfect for you. And um, he writes it down in his notebook and says, well, I will be off. I will be back in about a month. I will go look for the best hatchling there is. And uh, he gives you a wink and says, all right, well, um, make sure you uh, keep yourself busy uh, in this time. Uh Make sure you train every once in a while with uh, Sarah's Falcon, just to keep your str uh, your uh, your wits up. Um, but other than that, I will be back. Alrighty. Okay. So, what about the other thing I was prioritizing? You're researching stuff in the library. I find anything with that? Okay, make an investigation check and tell me what you're looking for specifically. Um. Once again, just information about the different races of the world. So now that we're at a premium library, I should be able to find like a book that's just all about races, maybe. And if I can't, then I'll just do what I did with the other one and just look for books about stories and see if I find something that's... Are you looking for just races in general or are you trying to pinpoint what you are? Well, like races with horns, but like just a big book of races would definitely probably include stuff about what I am. So is that concise enough, Riley? Yeah, that's concise enough. Okay. And yes. <laughs> Bruh, let's go. That's my so we got a nineteen. Alright. So as you look for races with different horns, um you see that most of them are talking about uh what seem to be ranging from satyrs to minotaurs, uh two types of ram creatures. Um you also see uh, some tiefling books um, with uh, that, but you also see uh, one that um, is about, uh, it seems to be a nonfiction book about travelers of uh, some uh, traveling merchants. And uh, you hear that um, they once uh, went to an auction house over in the far north, uh, over to the west, and they saw an auction of uh, what seemed to be uh, like uh, specialty bred um, creatures with uh, uh, that that could breathe fire and ice and uh, different types of elements and they say uh, the selling of them was barbaric and they tried to free them but uh, eventually they were caught and sent to prison where they wrote their book mm. interesting all right again wow. it sounds a lot like the creature you read in your fiction book so so, but this, so this was a non-fiction book. So now I know that there's like, like a like a smaller humanoid version of them. Uh, you would assume so, yeah. Hmm. Intriguing. Okay, so seems, yeah. So now I have just a month before I get my falcon. Yep. Well, now you just learned that. Yeah. Like that... human versions can't exist, and that they also have 
breath powers. Do you think could I could put that together? Yeah, could I try to put try to breathe something out? All right. Uh, one, I'm gonna ask where you're doing it. Yeah, that would probably be good. Like when I'm when I'm training with the Falconeers, are there ever times I'm just alone in the field or with not that many people? Yeah, of course. So maybe when I'm alone and no one's around in the field on one day of practice in that month, I will try. All right. So I'm going to allow you to make a um, a survival check. Survival is wisdom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I got a two. Oh. As you uh, try to focus all your might and try to breathe out like you heard these creatures could, uh, all you really feel is almost like a slight minty taste in your mouth, and that's about it. Hmm. That is intriguing, though. Okay. So, like, but I could tell that's not what my mouth normally feels like. No, it's usually not. Okay, so that just makes Priscilla more curious, I think. But I'm not going to just metagame and say, I try again. So Yes. So I'm going to skip through a couple more times and say that um, um, uh, that uh, Hudok comes back and with a egg, it seems like. He tells you that he couldn't find um, a hatchling that would suit you. So uh, he found the next best thing, an egg. You're going to have to take care of the egg and incubate it to make sure it doesn't die in, um, ha uh, while it's still in this form. But um, uh, he gives it to you and says, uh, here are the things that you need with it. And he gives you some supplies to keep it warm. Okay. So, Do I need to write these down or are they just like, no, just, warm? No, just say like, you just have an egg and some supplies to keep it warm. Okay. So eventually... And did uh, he teach me how to keep it warm? Yes, he did. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to make sure it stays alive. All right, so with that, uh, you eventually head back to your house with the egg, and your father uh, says that you're finally growing up and becoming your own woman, and uh, he's very proud of you. You set the egg in your room and keep it warm, uh, like he said, uh, for the for the, for the the caring of it. And eventually, um, he tells you that you should stay inside today because another storm is brewing. Another one? Is it going to be as bad as the one a few, what, what, I mean, months ago at this point? He looks at you and says it might even be worse. Oh, shit. That's not good. <laughs> so, do you just stay inside? How uh, old is well, you, yeah. by the way, at this point? Uh, what? You seem to be about uh, 15, 16. So, then I'm like Dragonborn. I'm like, I'm, I'm an adult now. All right. So with that, um... But yeah, I'm going to try to make sure that egg is safe. It's a safe spot. I'm warming it up, making sure that was going to happen to it. And with that, uh, I think we have to end it. Uh, I'm sorry, I have some things I need to do. Um, but uh, it's been really fun playing with you. Uh, thank yes. you all for joining us. Uh, would you guys like to say anything to the audience before you, we leave? Uh, that shit was really fun. Yes, it was. Um, I was not expecting it to go uh, this way. Uh, I was expecting... I, I had prepared for a lot more than this. Uh, but we're, we're just going to have to save that for the next section. Oh, okay. Nice. I'm so, guessing it's because I spent a lot of time in the town. Well, that's stuff. completely fine. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, probably, but that's completely fine. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that I regret doing that. I'm just saying that's probably why I didn't do too much. Mm -hmm. So, with that, uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, make sure you tune in for tonight, where we have Magic School. Cool. Magic School. All right. So, again, thank you all for joining us. And uh, we will see.